So good to be pardoned, dude. <laughs> I so watched, good to be pardoned. I so watched, good to be pardoned. I watched this movie the other night called Another Earth because mm-hmm. it's with Britt Marling, who's like my favorite. Yeah. Uh, love. Did she write this one too? I don't know if she wrote it. Not um, a bad movie. Oh, you've, you've seen, seen it? it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. I don't really remember. I saw it like when it first came out. But yeah, I kind of, she's um, has the opportunity to go to another, it's like a, a sort of like random lottery system to go to another. Well, you have to write in an essay. Write in an so essay. So here's the yeah. thing. They find out there's another earth and it's identical to this earth. And uh, so they're like, oh my God, how are we going to make contact with it? How-? So everybody gathers around. And you're watching the first person to ever make contact with it. And they're like, you know, let's say it's me. They go, uh, hello? Like, is there anyone there? And they hear back. The, 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 they hear an echo of their voice. It was like, hello, is anyone there? And I was like, yes. And it was like, this is Robert Eiler of whatever. Or can you hear me? And it was like, yes, this is Robert Eiler. And they're like, what? And it's identical like Earth, there is identical, and honestly, it did hit me. Like Casma's trying to be funny right now. It's not no, really don't they I'm say... doing what her face is. <laughs> and... Don't they say that time? Some people say like time doesn't exist, and like us as young people, and us in the future is like all happening right now. Would that be? Have like you ever the... heard that? Time is cyclical. Kind of like the OA. Right. Yeah, I mean, listen, you've heard all the you've heard all the theories. Like an arrival. <laughs> There's a lot of them out there. So okay. what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. So in this other earth, now they find out it's identical to this. So everyone is up there who's down there. Everyone, everything you're doing, this. So the girl says to the guy, she's like, would you want to meet? Like, what would you say to yourself? Yeah. That's what I want to know. What would you guys say? Uh. Is it are they are the exact same age? Like in Zach, everything's same? identical. Like but the then, wife, like she's married to Cutter, has two boys. Exactly. But what happens is they say that there's like a broken mirror theory this guy has, which is the second that they saw, which actually doesn't fully make sense, but okay, is the second they saw that Earth come into there, or because you could see it, like we see the moon, like you right. see this other Earth, and they're like, as soon the first time you saw that, everything changed because where we looked is not where they looked. But wouldn't that be like... So we were no longer mirroring each other. Exactly. That's when it all stopped. So... And then we didn't live identical lives. Exactly. But up until there, you did. But let's just say that you found out there was another Earth. Yeah. Okay. I'd be like, you... Let's make different choices and see what happens. From here on out. Yes. Well, I think once you're up there, you're already making... I would ask myself what the Sopranos ending really meant. Hmm. Because that's what everyone asks me, and I don't fucking know. <laughs> Somebody's got to know. Um, You're like, is there another David Chase there that was willing yeah. to share this information? No, I think like if I saw me, I'd be like, "What up, fam?" Like, <laughs> I would yeah. like it. I'd be like, "Yo, let's fucking, let's good." You would, you would date yourself, I'm sure. No, I would hate myself after like a, a little bit, but but right away, like that initial I hello. Would be, I would think it would be really cool to witness myself without like in the different way I witness myself do you know what I mean to be like oh that's how you're coming across because then it would change so much <sighs> of me yeah you know but what I then... mean or my perceptions or my my stories that I've told myself you know because yeah. oh you know how people are always like god I wish you could see you the way I see right you. yeah exactly I feel like it's an opportunity to do that yeah, like if you did something nice for you and you're like oh that was nice and yeah you're like, oh, I am nice yeah right exactly. yeah instead of always being so hard on yourself like you are yeah no offense. I'm taken. <laughs> There's um. I'd want to make sure everything below the belt lo- was the same. It's because always what close if, to that. What is... just what if it was bigger and it wouldn't be fair? Oh my god. The other day it was like, what you if you fucked, we... dude? The other day it was like we talked about what happened if Rob died, and you were like, I would want to look in, under the sheet and see his penis. Like it's it always goes to like this like you want to look at penis thing. Yeah. My so my what's manager What's your obsession with penises? I've said it before, my manager is a gay gentleman who thinks Kasim is a gay gentleman. He does? Yeah. You know, that's not the first time I've heard that. Well, I'm not surprised you're constantly talking about penis. I'm so comfortable but that being straight. I'm so comfortable. Being that my, straight. I was like, with? My brain always just goes I'm to so dick. Got you guys, I'm so comfortable being Dude, straight. Dude, I don't give a would, shit what you are. I just I want to know kiss, the penis obsession. I would kiss and like be romantic with a guy and it wouldn't mean anything to me. Why wouldn't it mean anything to you? Because <laughs> I'm so comfortable being straight. What? This conversation is confusing me. 
I think you're. And if I saw a guy and I fell in love with him and we were to do sex together Uh on each other, it wouldn't mean anything. (laughs) Okay. Because I'm straight. And we were to move in together and adopt a small black kid from Haiti and then grow to love each other and our new life together forever. It wouldn't mean anything other than we're just hanging out. Right. (laughs) Right. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm getting the sense you guys don't believe me. We don't give a shit is what the thing. Rob cares. No, I, I want, yes, I do care because I want you to be the most authentic you you can be. Mm, there you go. You know, there's a there's a growing group of you people out there that, that think I am not. The panties? The PJ panties? I'm Would sure you decide what to call them yet? Sure, the, the sure there's a bunch of guys that think I love men. And guess what? I do love men and I love women. And I love strong, powerful women, and I love strong, powerful men. Now, which one am I going to lay my lips on at night when I go to bed? As Jamie puts it, either or. So you're coming out now as saying you're bisexual? bisexual. No, 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 no. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> there what was only... I thought it wouldn't mean a thing. Look, is it gay if I see a man and I go, that's a good-looking dude? No, of course no. not. But you, but always wanting to see people's penises, kind of. I want to see yours because you're one of my best friends. But then you said you also said on <laughs> like three episodes ago that you wanted to see Bryce with his pants off. Well, because his hands are so big. But but you see how there's all like you you know. Well, give me another example. You know about addiction, <laughs> right? What do they say when they're like? Oh, oh, I like, can't stop. I'm not gonna be able to stop looking at well, dicks. Well, you always find excuses for why you want to look at someone's yeah. penis. Look, well, you're my friend. He's tall. There are less than ten guys that I wouldn't mind seeing. Oh, that's such a lie. That is such a lie. There's ten to fifteen. Do you worry? Do you wonder about Cutter's penis? Mm. <laughs> yeah, more than you, Jamie. No, I, just because I've known him since he was a kid. Yeah. See, oh, there's the excuse. Okay. Now. Cutter, would it? What would it be like to be held by Cutter? Come on, babe. yeah, that's, I'll show it that's to you right different. Now. Let's, let's go. Let's... That'd be different. I <laughs> bet yours is Cutter so. I bet yours is squishy and pink, like just like. Oh my god! You know those little toys you get at the. Uh, yeah, like, the eyes what? pop out. You go to the, <laughs> the, the Discovery <laughs> Zone or whatever those stores yeah, are. Yeah, my left nut just pops out like. <laughs> they think. All right, now we're all having fun. I'm straight as an arrow. Mm, don't make that face when I say that. I just can you imagine you met yourself and you're like, you're a legend, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Ollie G. Yeah. Cast of G's Ollie G, G, G on another earth. Jamie, you have to watch because we we're talking about how you like um, Love Island, but you have to watch the Love Island from the UK yeah. because they're like vernacular and the stuff that is so. What does vernacular mean? It's like the words they use, right? Uh, What's the definition like the of language? vernacular? Can you look up the definition of vernacular, Gabby or Bryce? I kind of let that go, but I'm sorry. I just no, and it's just like <laughs> uh, we are the dumbest. You know, like he's like he's like, hey, he's like, what's up, bro? Like, like, yeah, like, yeah, and yeah, all the yeah, things yeah. they do. Like, what is it? Um, what are all the words that we used to say? Oh, man, like, I, I, I'm, I'm off. I haven't watched it in a while. But... Flirting was something. Remember, it was like, oh, you're gra- grafting. Oh. Yeah, so grafting. Like, was, Man, she's grafting, bro. Oh my you know? god. Like, yeah, so, it's coming so... up with her. What is it? Ooh. What? They always say couple up. Couple yeah. up. Couple right, up. yeah. If she chooses to couple up with you. What, do we have a definition? Man, Gabby, Gabby, bleep all that. You could just Language talk, Language used in a specific region. All right, yeah. So the yeah, they're from Love the- Island is a region. <laughs> yeah. They're like, uh, where it's are they? An island. Essex, they got some people from Essex. All right, over, right. yeah. There was a show. You watch Towie, the, the, the uh, something. I don't have time. You guys are always asking you, me if I watch You got us into Big Brother and then we I don't stopped even watch talking it about it. It's such a terrible, I'm, wa- I'm horrible. watching it. I've watched every episode. I haven't episode. watched this past week. Oh, I haven't seen it in God a God forbid, time. dude. But God you, forbid you go all the way with something with me. Let's go all the way. You said you don't have, uh, she's a chick. You don't want to go all the way with her. <laughs> go all the way with me, Jamie. <laughs> You the you, you have said, to wear a condom. It's not fun. You said you what? God, yeah. sex with a con. Listen, I know sometimes I talk about things on the show. You're not like like this. Really got him pissed. Sometimes I talk about cigarettes or or I you miss know, we're gonna figure it but, out. I just don't want to go back on birth control. Right. I'm just saying. Like sometimes I talk about cigarettes are great, and I don't want to push anyone towards cigarettes. I know they're hard. Like you know, nobody should smoke. But I'm they're just, so I'm just fun. Reminiscing, but man, it's like. Sex with a condom compared to it's sex terrible. without a con. Sex with a condom is just like it's terrible. It's just terrible. hard. Yeah, it's just hard. I mean, for for a what? for a f- almost forty year old woman, yes. 
But do you see? Here's my biggest problem with the sex with the condom. It breaks that flow. One hundred percent. And that's exactly. it. You know, like obviously, I don't like. I, I the vagina feels better. No cond, but. It's just that that you you know you're doing your bet and you're like about to slip it in and you're like oh hold on a minute I'll be um, right, right back and then you know and then it's like a girl grabs her phone it's awkward and the, yeah. yeah and you're tell like, me if oh, this makes any sense you just watch with TV. my ex we would start no condom and then do uh, then I would add one on risky. later risky I mean that's th- why completely pointless <clears throat> yeah, Cutter I actually have have mentioned that a couple of times but Cutter is so terrified of getting me pregnant again. <laughs> Because have kids. Because we got pregnant, boom, boom. So he's so yeah. You're a myrtle, of, fertile, of fertile, fertile myrtle. myrtle. Yeah, you're a myrtle, fertile. He's so afraid of me being pregnant again. Like he's so adamant that we are done. We want no more children. But he wouldn't tie up. He would. I just feel like it's. Sorry. I just feel like he's very young, for that. Like I feel like it might be against the wall. He's thirty-one years old. <laughs> <laughs> He's 31. What's it like being held in those arms? <laughs> those big meaty arms. He pissed me off so much last night because Dude, what'd he do? Let's hear it. I was like rolling over and he's like, What do you what do you want me to hold you or something? I was like, not now. Like, what do you have to fucking ask, man? You're my husband. Like, come over and hold me. Yeah. It was like when I was telling you guys, I was before I went to bed too, I was like, oh, I'm so tired. Like Oh, I just like need rest. Like this is so, it's just a lot. Like it's just been a lot. And he's like, what do you want me to hold you? Uh, I get, dude, I am so bad at that stuff. I get it. I need to be told and I'm working on See, here's on the it. thing. Cause he'll be like, it's not inviting all the time necessarily from you. I'm like, that's probably when I need it more. Hmm. Is when you feel not sure is when I, if that means I'm like going through something. That's when I, I'm never going to push you away if you hug me. No, you'll sock him. Oh, but you, you've said you don't want to be touched at times. Sexually. Oh, that's always sexually? Like, yeah, I don't need like a hand all over me. Like a hug is very different. Are there ever times where you're like, I don't want to be kissed? Yes. Okay, take it easy. <laughs> We're not going to kiss you. Fuck yeah, you. Yeah, calm, calm down. I'm not going to. I definitely girl. don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. What? I think it's fine. I think, you know, some guys... They do some things well, and uh, some things like the physical affection is like a blind spot here for me. You know, sometimes I need practice and repetition, mm-hmm. and you've got to sometimes hold their hands, our hands through it. Yep. All right. I'll do that. You know, because he does so many other things well. Oh my God, for sure. Yeah, I'm getting to know Cutter better than ever. Better than ever I love that. Lately, yeah. He's, it makes me happy. It's interesting because he comes off as this like cool, like whatever. And then when you get to know him and you're like, oh, you're not cool at all. No, he's got <laughs> so many quirks. He's so, so many. Weird. Yeah, yeah, super so dry, many. sarcastic. Yes. And kind of a goofball. Yeah. He, you know, I want to say it was, I feel like it was the last Sunday you, you guys were over. I felt like he was being a little bit more like goofy Cutter and I liked that. It's it got to be tough because when he grew up, he was like the best looking kid at his school. Was he? And well, I didn't go to his school, but I am, I can't imagine any, anyone better looking than him at 16. Man, that sounds <sighs> weird. But he's also. So... <laughs> Ugh. He was so good at baseball and sports and those those activities. I always thought that he was like going to grow up to be a completely just. Sp- no humor sports no humor. beer drinking wow like bros yeah. man's bro yeah no he's cuckoo he's funny yes but you know i'm starting to learn baseball guys are kind of funny and they they're are. gross and you know what else he does well, he they're wears... naked every day oh you would love it he wears a mask cutter. cutter yeah he wears a mask he does you know the kind of mask he wears braddock usa oh do you know mask. about braddock usa you guys it's the most affordable, reusable mask made from premium upcycle t-shirt and jersey material. And it's super soft, eco-friendly, offers you the, the uh, face protection that you need. And it's made here right in the USA, made in, actually in Los Angeles. So now when you go check out their website at braddockusa.com, you will see they already have great prices. But for a limited time, they are offering offering an additional 20% off with promo code PJ Pants. Thank you. Again, that's 20% off your entire order with promo code PJ Pants at B R A D D O C K USA.com, Braddock USA.com with promo code P 
PJ pants. PJ Look pants. Look what happens when we can see ourselves. We're yeah. like, oh. Um, let's say you go and you go to drop Jack, your son, off at you know preschool. Let's say he's yeah. going to preschool. Yeah, you're and drop you, Jack off. The teacher comes to grab him, and the teacher has a face tattoo. What is your? Do you do you even think no. twice? What's wow? Face you tattoo? don't even think twice. Is it a no. teardrop? See, you're a good parent. You you want to know what it is. You're just like, ah, eh, fuck it. Take this. <laughs> take. This I kid. would leave my child with Action Bronson. Mm. Does but action, now Action has a head tattoo, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I. And but you I know don't Action think, Bronson. Yeah, but like I don't think anybody like I wouldn't judge that as not being able to love and tear for a child. Okay, what if it said like "fuck you" under his eye? That, mm. Interesting choice for a preschool teacher. Okay, what if, let's say, all the tattoos were nice, but there were a ton of them. Like, his whole face almost is covered like in tattoos. Like, just a bunch of Care Bears. Beca- and what do you what do you think? It's because I'm worried, like, of my kids seeing that? No, just of more of, like, oh, is this person... This is the right? type of person like, that I'm putting in charge of my child for the next six hours? Yeah, or just, I don't know. Like, because, so, like, there's a thing where, like, if somebody has a face tattoo and it looks cool and it's small and whatever, but then you see some people, you're like, oh, no. Like, yeah, but Post Malone seems so nice. So nice. And I got to tell you, you're talking one about of Post millionaires. Malone's best friends. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, yeah. Sweetest, sweetest guy. What about that TikTok guy? That guy, that ball guy, um... On TikTok, I don't know. Is he on TikTok? Jamie, (laughs) as an almost 40-year-old woman, do you really want to be talking about TikTok videos? No, because I have no idea how to do it, how it works. Uh, You know who is on TikTok? Are you? Oh, Gabby. (laughs) Gabby's on TikTok. Finally interested in a girl, huh, bud? Well, Gabby did one of these. Did we already talk about this? I don't. If we did, let's let's hear it again. Gabby did it. one of these transformation <laughs> uh, TikToks. And how could she? She's so perfect already. Yes, yeah, she is. Look, uh, I don't know. I don't know if she's gonna let this fly. But she doesn't like this. She doesn't. She edits like it. it. You can edit it out if you don't like it. Nope, it's staying in, or you're fired. You gotta edit this out as long, along with all the other gay stuff. And I don't want to talk about gay stuff because I'm so straight. Every time I say that, you guys are sn- you guys are snickering and laughing. No, listen, I have a lot of straight friends. Most of my friends are straight, and what we all sit around do and go is, man, we're so straight. We're yeah. so, that's so, so do I. I do that. I know you do, bud. You do God. it in the car on the way here. And roar, you, roar. I go. Roar, roar, roar. You do it whenever you're like, oh, look at this picture of this guy I follow on Instagram. I'm so straight. You know, if, if I were to show you my, because Instagram on. Hold your, on, go back to Ga- go back to Gabby. She doesn't want this. Oh, she's. It doesn't matter. Gabby made a TikTok where she does this sort of. Uh, hey, this is just regular me, and then, Ooh, no. boom! It's a it's a cut to glammed up, Gabby. Yes. Yeah. And I gotta tell you, Gabby, you look great in both, but the glow up. I don't know if we're gonna have we're gonna have to throw this up somewhere. Yep. But uh, look, if that's what TikTok is all about, sign me up. Sign me up for tick tick. A tick a tick. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, we're 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 into this new thing where we embarrass Gabby on a. I don't like it. We want her to be a character on the show. She is. Just like Gilbert on Tiger Belly. Did you just smell your armpit? I didn't put deodorant on. Sorry, Kaz. You're gonna have a rough car ride home, dude. That's okay. I like your mouth. Oh, yeah, he's gonna be in heaven. <laughs> what are we kidding? What are we kidding? I'm gonna put the like... heater on and lock the door yeah, and the windows. He's like, hey, could you stick your arm out the window? Um, back to my ins- back to more gay stuff. My Instagram explore page that the the one that shows you just like what the you algorithm. Think you'd like? Yeah, it's all redheads and muscle men. Why? What are you trying to say? I'm just saying because I watched one workout video, maybe a couple, and then now I'm getting all these really handsome big buff guys. Cool. Is that your type? Should I leave out the part <laughs> where I say they're handsome? No. Is that necessary? We just want you to they be are. you, Cass. You Do guys you, would baby. support me no matter what. No matter what. Are you kidding me? So it's, let me tell you all the versions of me you're going to get. You're going to get straight Cass. When? You're going to get super straight Cass. You're gonna get UFC casts. Oh, okay. you're gonna get football player casts. See, this mm. is what straight guys Bo do. Now I know he is straight. One. These are things I'm into. Ready? Drinking a raw eggs out of a glass. I love boxing, and 
I love uh, nothing better than a, a rare dripping blood T-bone steak. I thought you were going to say something. We're oh. making tomahawks tonight. Ooh. What do you mean tonight? Isn't well, that we, our Robbie, Sunday? Robbie got ribs for Sunday. Yeah, I did. Robbie got ribs. How, what is 10 hours? It's like, a, it? it's like an eight-pound short rib, like a giant thing. It's going to be God, fucking so amazing. I'm so pumped. Football at Jamie's on Sundays is it's, – it's become my favorite day of the week. Mm, me too. This is my explore pitch. Is that no. somebody doing a, a skateboard trick? You got somebody doing a kickflip there, It's a man? redhead on a skateboard. It's got mus- muscle men. Muscle? It's wait, red, wait, wait. Go, go down and to the left. That's not a muscle guy. That's just a dude. Go, go down. Okay, sorry. Go up, up, up. And then to the left, it's just a guy. It it's just like a model dude. Oh, I guess it's like a. Fuck. It's like a cartoon. Another thing that would be. I'm into cartoons, <laughs> redheads, and muscling out with my bros. You know what movie I just showed Bo the other day? Huh. Um, Goonies. The best. He oh. loved it so much. Such a great movie. And um, really, like, it, it holds tells up. the themes of um, coming together as a community. Right. And 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 this is gonna go nicely with what we're talking about today, hunting for one-eyed Willie. Well, now that's all we play is we play Goonies and we're like hunting oh, for one-eyed yeah. Willie. Yeah, so Sunday fun we're playing Goonies. <laughs> You're yeah. so excited to play Goonies in our play little play play set back in the backyard. I am so stoked to see those kids. It's, I want to see you climb up with the telescope with them and play it. Jack has no idea what he's doing. He just walks around going, ha, 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 where's <laughs> yeah. the Goonies? <laughs> Um, yeah, I go- drew him a treasure map. Oh, see, oh, wow. that, that I can get behind. Do you put a treasure somewhere and they can find it? We, I have maybe Sunday I will. Yeah, because you know, I have another adult. We'll get gold coins, chocolate gold coins. Yes. Yeah. Let me order those get on Amazon. Gelt. Is that what that's called? Gelt. Hanukkah gelt. That's right. Man of the, man of the world. You little Jap. <laughs> I just learned that word. <laughs> It stands for Jewish American princess. Apparently, it was the meanest thing you could have called a girl from Long Island. You know, we were we never had those here. She's so jappy. I remember <laughs> there was, but uh, I was with a bunch of like my Jewish friends in whenever it was junior high, and one kid was like kept saying like jap over a jap over, and like these like big dudes were like hey like. I guess they were like a bunch of Jewish guys. And they were like, you know what the fuck you're talking about? And inst- the kid was just like, nope. <laughs> you know? like, I, don't, I don't even know what it means. Like, you know, and they were like, well, and then the guy gave him like a lesson on what it means. Like the whole time the kid was like, yeah, I know exactly what oh. it means, you know. Oh, very interesting. Well, thank you for the education, sir. Coming up in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have something dope where you guys are going to be able to play poker with me and Kasim, Jamie, if she wants in. Yes. But we're... Uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk more about it in the upcoming weeks. But let's see, do we have? Um... Watch out for me because I'll have, I just have pocket to email rockets. Both school while you do this. So yeah, and fast. don't worry, it's all uh, it'll all be online. So there's no, it'll all social distancing. Question I'm coming in with all my Here poker you knowledge. You got a you got a question, Cass. Uh, question for Cass. This one's from Andy. Question for Cass. I'm a huge fan of yours since your first Comic Con video, and you're way cooler than those other two scrubs from the Goodfellas or whatever show they're on. Yeah, but I always wanted to know on your Going Deep series. If any or all of that was scripted or if that was actually improvised, was it ever awkward with any of those guests? Thanks, guys. In all actuality, I love this podcast and everyone in it. Uh, no, uh, I've answered this. I've answered this. There is no, there was there was no script. It was, I had jokes I had written, but it was all improvised. And, and I didn't talk to the guests until the cameras were rolling. It was very awkward during the shoot, but then afterwards, um, I would smooth it over. There was one time where it wasn't, uh, the person was not cool with it and we never aired it. And I don't know where that footage is, but, uh, yeah, that's the story. Thanks for, thanks for the good story. Electronic mail. Are you fucking talking shit, dude? <laughs> body well, image. Welcome to body image. There issues. he is. Wow. Whole squad. Look at that. Hey, What's bud. What's up? I wore a color because I felt like it went with your backdrop. It does. You look great. Yeah. It's a nice color right now. Handsome man. Drop? <laughs> What's happening? Uh, yeah, so no, all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, our guest this week is Mark Birnbaum, who's a friend of mine, friend of Jamie's. He doesn't like Kasim. <laughs> Not yet, but I'm going to get there with you, pal. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's a restaurateur. Is that what you'd like to be called, Mark? Sure, why not? Entrepreneur, a restaurant tour, anything with their er at the end. Yes. Entrepreneur, and just so just so you are clear with everything with the show, they know all of my secrets. So anything you want to say about me. So if you want to give the people a taste of what's coming, you want to tell them how we met. 
<laughs> sure. <laughs> One of my favorite stories. Why not? Get in right into it. Yeah. Rob tried to kill someone and I stopped him. No, that's not what happened. So what happened was we believe that, uh, the first business I ever had was a place called Lobby on 38th Street between 8th and 9th Avenue. I was probably 24, 25 years old when it opened. I was uh, new in the business, just trying to learn it with my friend Jeremy, who had more knowledge. And I was like nervous and running around doing every position possible from cleaning bathrooms to, to DJing. But um one day early on in this venture, um, a, somebody like a security guard taps me on the shoulder just as I'm coming out of the office and say, hey, there's like an important person here, but he's peeing in the plant. I said, I'm sorry, <laughs> what? He's like, yeah, he's outside the bathroom, but he's peeing in the plant. I was like, who the fuck is doing that? So I get, I, he brings me over. And this is within seconds because it was like the office door, I'll never forget, opens up. There's a curtain that I open and in the bathroom line is right there in front of it. Yeah. And Rob, who I didn't know at all, is standing very much comfortably hunched over, you know, two two hands on, on the piche, peeing <laughs> into our fake plant that's sitting outside the bathroom because he didn't want to wait online. I, I grab his shoulder and I was like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, what? No good. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> and then I realized it was Rob Eiler from The Sopranos. I was like, all right, I'll let it slide because I'm a fan. But <laughs> See, that's but, like celebrity yeah, really? Yeah, that's there, the there blessing. And, and, and in typical Rob form, he somehow has this magical ability to turn that frown upside down, <laughs> right? So, like, you can't really be mad at him. It's yeah. just, like, one of those things. As, what, as no much good? as you want to be, he, does, he just makes you laugh. He's, like, got that comedic sort of ability that's very natural and fast which i appreciated always and that's really how we met it's that's a true story that's how we met that is the that's reason and story. the only reason potentially there was another great one that i love which was i was at mark's house and this is like nine in the morning when everyone's sleeping and me and like four people are doing you know we would hide drugs from mark because mark and his partner eugene don't like to see us doing drugs so we would hide it and once they would go to bed we'd be like <laughs> okay now we could do, do drugs and like party so we're in the living room and we're blasting music and we're dancing and that. And I hear him and he's like, hey, hey. And I go over and I look and he's upstairs. And he's like, yo, what's going on? And I was like, oh, what's the matter? And he's like, yo, why is it so loud? And I, I looked at him and I go, I don't know. I'll tell him, I'll tell him to quiet down. <laughs> like, and it was just me like raging in the living room, you know? But yeah, like, uh, it's not me. And you also said no good. That's yeah. It. I'm like, oh, yeah, no good. No good. The, uh, no so good. Just, just so more, uh, people know, Mark has restaurants in New York, Los Angeles. Where else? Mexico still? Yeah, Mexico. Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, Vegas. Mexico, uh, Vegas, where you like to hang out sometimes. Yeah. So it's catch. Uh, so catch was the original one in in meat packing district in New York, which is uh, a seafood focused restaurant. And then um, that expanded to Los Angeles, which is in West Hollywood. And then it expanded further into uh, Las Vegas at Aria hotel. And after um, eight years of being just a catch seafood restaurant, we pivoted to a steak house, which we had some experiences in from many years ago of Abe and Arthur's where both of you have been many yes. times to a, a restaurant called Catch Steak, which is our newest brand. And we're working on expanding that now to California and potentially Aspen and then mm -hmm. Las Vegas as well. So we'll have two sort of catch brands, but different focus um, from the seafood side and the steak side, but both have healthy options and are vegan options and things for vegetarians. So it's really something for everybody, but that's it. You know, we just stayed with the Catch brand as the kind of prefix. And then we could do Catch Italian, we could do whatever in theory. You know, I, I feel like as somebody who got to meet you kind of at the beginning of your career, right? Uh, you met me before yeah. I was had a career, actually, because yeah. I met you at Chaos. That's right. Uh, when I was doing a guest list, and <laughs> you, was I, I still didn't in high have school. A, I, I was still selling life insurance. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, so, so I have really yeah. met you. There's there's something that's always set you and Eugene apart, and you're just you're. And not to say that other guys in the nightclub industry and stuff, at least when we were coming up and growing up, weren't nice. But you guys were just, you were like these, the good guys. You were like really good value, good people that really took care of their people and all of their customers. And you kind of set that tone. And I think that's why you guys have been as successful as you are, because um, 
all your intentions and all of your hard work, but also like all the heart you put in, like all, some of my greatest memories are in all of your places. Like my best birthdays yeah, were at SL, it. you know, and you just have all the same people, con- even they coming to town, don't even live in New York. They would just always go to your places. You guys were the best at what you did for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Well, what the beauty of, the beauty of that is that I think that from a young age, because we did start Eugene and I when we were young, meaning like we were in our early 20s when mm-hmm. we got into this sort of business and we didn't know anybody important and we didn't know we didn't have connections. We were just happy to like have a party with our friends. And if we were able to touch any sort of uniqueness, whether it was like an athlete, a celebrity of uh, acting or musician or any kind, we would be not just thrilled, but we thought it as an opportunity of like, wow, we're actually becoming, you know, like sort of successful. Like we measured our success on sort of who was coming to our places. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't just like my friends from summer camp, right. high school and college. Right. Um, which and my cousins and like that was my guest list when 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 we opened, you know, or when we started in this business in New York City. And so we just treated everybody. We saw the opportunity. First of all, I think it's important that we had a good upbringing and parents and things of that mm-hmm. nature that like, you know, gave us good value, certainly. But I think we had an integrity, which is when I hear people say, and I've heard that before, thankfully, that people are like, you know, you were like always very good to us or you you, you were genuine or you weren't like slimy club guys or whatever, whatever the version is. It's because we had values first. We had integrity, you know, as well. And then we realized that, like, we're not that special. So, you know. I, I came to terms with the fact that I wasn't very smart, like as a student growing up, I came to terms with the fact that I was never a very good athlete. I was never a good magician, a good, really great at anything. And yet I was good at talking to people and hanging out. I was a professional at that. (laughs) So, yeah. And so, you know, how do you turn that into a business? Frankly, I didn't, I just sort of did what I enjoyed. And, and because I enjoyed what I was doing, and Eugene did as well, um, success came. And I think that's always sort of my underlying lesson to anybody I ever speak to, because now I'm 43 years old, not 23 years old. Mm -hmm. But that phrase of, if you love what you do, you never go to work a day in your life, to me is so true because success does come and it may not be financial, but if you're a happy person Uh every single day without stress and you go to sleep at night looking forward to tomorrow, that's success. Now, if money comes, fantastic. If you grow a business, fantastic. But I think we both just loved what we did. Yeah, you and guys it weren't never stressed. Felt like work. You were having fun with with people. We had fun. Yeah. And I, st- and I still have fun, honestly. It's a different kind of fun, but I still have fun. And when I met Rob or I met you or I met a young Lindsay Lohan or a young Scarlett Johansson or any of these kind of people that really nobody, um, you know, in, in my world ever, you know, had you know, the pleasure of meeting and then I met them. I really looked at that as an opportunity also to, I don't want to say take advantage because that's not the the right word. But when I say that I knew that I was never going to be great at anything, but there are people that are great at what they do. If they were my customers and God forbid friends, then there's, then I don't have to be the best, you know, I'm not going to be Michael Jordan, but to have Michael Jordan in my restaurant Mm. was very impactful to have Tiger Woods in our, you know, our rookie year, when I say rookie year, it was like Tiger Woods rookie year, Derek Jeter rookie year. You know, there were these like very, you know, a lot of the Nick players that are now like commentators or coaches for that matter were hanging with us because they, nobody necessarily cared about them because they were rookies. We did. And then as you grow up, it's kind of a big deal that you're, you're with those super athletes or now very famous people. And, the customers like it in the nightlife and the right. restaurant business because it's something to see that's different from everywhere else, plus the good food, plus the good vibe. So how do you – and by the way, I, I've heard nothing but great things about you from Thank Rob. You, and, uh, I, I wish I could say the same about you, but I, you know, I, I, mean, I just spent, really just He tough. spent the first half of this <laughs> podcast trying to get me to admit that I like men. And <laughs> let's just say we haven't come to an agreement there. Um, There's nothing wrong with that. I've, exactly. I, I grew up in the. Uh, I grew up as a food and beverage kid. In my dad was in um, hotel management. But he was always a, like a, a food and beverage director, and, and hospitality is always the name of the game. And I feel like I, that's a business I get. I have a couple questions. One is, how do you start a restaurant? One of the hardest 
uh, one of the hardest businesses to to make profitable and get off the ground. How how only how do you not only make a business um, like that work, but how do you attract celebrities and have it become a place that everyone talks about? Because when people talk about catch out here, it's like this person was at catch, this mm-hmm. this this A list celebrity, this A list singer. I mean, it's how do you get to that point? You know, because that's that's ultimately all marketing. I guess your food, you can have great food, but it it might take more than that to get to a, a, a spot where you're like, have all this cachet and, and how do you build cachet? And, and and is it just like, do you offer one celebrity like, hey, let's give you 10 grand to come hang out at our <laughs> restaurant. And then hopefully your other friends will see you on Instagram and stuff like that. Or is there another way that, you know, that you've cultivated that's maybe more organic? I mean, I'd love to hear how, how a business becomes up here as opposed to just like here well can you give um, us the secrets a and <laughs> and help invest in my new idea but no, it's, it's a different strategy for everybody and i think that depending on where you came from or how you grew up in terms of you know the business or social life some people are born into families of success or some people came from the midwest and never met a celebrity in their life some people grew up in new york la whatever for us um our business plan essentially um, was to create the perfect salad. And I don't mean that for the actual salad, but I mean as a, as a metaphor for an environment in a restaurant or a nightclub. And by, to describe a perfect salad, you would never say just lettuce, but you would also never just say tomatoes and you would never say just croutons. So the balance there is very important. The lettuce in this metaphor would be to make sure that we had nice, normal people our our friends our our what we always said is we are our demographic so always have that core base because that's that's your business model Mm -hmm. the 90 percent. that's who's coming back that's also who tells the people the water cooler conversation about i saw this person that person they're the word spreaders if you have a room that's full of celebrities and only celebrities first of all that will last very quickly because there's always something newer and better and and they're like the kind of locust world where they just come, they, they, they devour you while you're new and exciting. And as soon as there's nothing left on that bone, they're gone. Mm-hmm. So it's not sustainable. And also, uh, you know, if Madonna was sitting next to Jennifer Lopez, and this is Beyonce, I'm not so sure they're going and telling everybody in their world about, Oh my God, I saw this person. Right. So ultimately it's, it's for them to enjoy. And that's nice. And that is some people's business model to just cater to that 1% of the 1%. But we would rather say, like, how about we just sprinkle some of those tomatoes and sprinkle some of those croutons and a little bit of those bacon bits, which is the musicians, athletes, celebrity, whatever, whoever you deem to be special. And by the way, it could be titans of industry. It could be anything that's a little bit more more unique to you than seeing your friend from 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 work. Right. So so what that created was was that perfect salad. And and we treated as best we could the lettuce as well as the tomatoes, because both are equally important. One without the other doesn't really work. No yeah. different than a bad salad. So seating the room appropriately so that people did get to touch that celebrity or that that businessman that they would have loved to have gotten a meeting with but never could. But in a restaurant environment, they may just go over to that table and say, oh, my God, um, I'm gonna say, are you enjoying your and you, you hit it off somehow. Mm-hmm. And that's on those people to figure out how to network a room. But when I was a kid and I say kid, like when I was like 24, I went to Nobu for the first time and I was taken by a friend of mine. And um, I just gotten into the nightclub business for real. And I sat in that room. I was intimidated because everyone in that room seemed like they were had a lot of money and they were important. And I wasn't. But what I did admire was I watched certain people that I actually know today that I didn't know then, but I watched them get up from table to table. And it was a room working room that Nobu in, 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 in uh, Tribeca. I was like, it for some reason clicked in my mind that like, this is not just a restaurant. This is a place where people need to go to do business and to also impress potentially. Mm-hmm. And that meant, wow, what table do you need to be sitting at to seem like, here we are again, it's a new hierarchy of, 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 you know, best real estate, best club table, best corner, they'll pay for it. And they'll, they'll, they'll become friends with you if you are the gatekeeper to get it because they know 
that where Rob sat with me at table 101 at 10 June in the corner and next to us was a certain caliber of table and next to that and next to that where all the money was being set. And then there was a tier below. That wasn't to say that the people tier below were upset. They were happy to be in the room, but that's only because they saw what I hate to rank things, but if there's like a list, B list, C list, if B's and C's realize that there's no A's, then they might even leave you as well. So you need to sprinkle that uniqueness so that people feel almost like excited and it's aspirational. It's psychology. And that's sort of a, I, I could talk about that for, I don't want to go on for hours, but I could talk about, and it's not $10,000 payments. That's not authentic. Yeah. It's organic. It's taking care of Rob and Jamie Lynn while they were kids because they were important to me, but I also happen to like them. So it's strange, but there's a lot of examples of them where they were child actors or young young just getting like they were the c or d role of they weren't getting invited to any parties but oh man i took care of them and eugene took care of them like they were the biggest stars mm -hmm. in the world and that was before we had to and now those people know us and trust us because we've been doing it now for 15 20 years yeah. and you have a credibility with you so now when we open restaurants or nightclubs or whatever we don't really do clubs anymore people show up for free because they're our friends yes. and also they're our customers they know exactly what they're going to get and they'll be taken care of and that's important so time is a big, big deal. Yeah, I would feel bad not showing up to something that you guys did. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and, and a lot of people, I think, share that sort of feeling of, like, not guilt, but, but <clears throat> we've been doing this together for so long. And as much as they're incredibly famous and get whatever they want and they can walk into any room or whatever, um, we do something that they need as well. Mm -hmm. They being the customers, they being someone who's rich and famous, by the way, still, and the, and the most powerful guy in their office at Goldman Sachs can't get a reservation. So he better be nice to me in theory. Yeah. Right. Like the restaurant hookup is a crazy thing. Um, um, and, and, and sending someone a comp appetizer or dessert is also a very powerful thing, even though it's a $2 item, it's the gesture. Yes. And whoever's sitting with them is like, Mm, the chef it's just yeah. such a play from in the, the chef. Ego. wow yeah, yeah. Ooh. I'm, i could talk about this sort of stuff for hours i, I think it's 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 a psychology that meets like mm -hmm. you know um access it's 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 so much more than food and a and a and a space you know it's uh, i haven't even mentioned food yet well here's the thing about it. you that's talk a, about a salad how, that's how crazy this yeah, yeah right. you, you've it, talked about a, making a salad. Literally, Rob told me one of the best salads he's ever had was that catch. You know, so not oh, only your guys' food has always been so good. Catch is the first place I ever ate sushi. Ate sushi, yeah, yeah. exactly. I refused. Wow. I was like, I'm years. never, I'm never eating, I'm never eating fish, I'm never eating sushi up until I was 30. You know, I would only eat chicken fingers. Yeah, that's right. Do that I it. know? Rob is Rob is literally <laughs> the most stubborn person I've ever known, and I know Jamie can attest, testify yeah. to this. If he doesn't want to do something, it's virtually impossible to, uh, yeah, it's all good for you, but just not for me. Yeah. And it's like, you can't argue it. But at some point we wore him down on the sushi and finally he would say things like, oh, I love that, thank God. Yeah, yeah. I have a question. So I feel like so much of New York's, at least in, in, in our heyday, right? Of like the restaurant business and the club business, it was felt like it was like all page six, right? It was just like always like, getting the mentions like that was just that was kind of how you got to pull some things and how you knew where to go. I mean, I would have friends that would come in from L.A. and be like, oh, these these are the places, right? Because it's the places that are constantly being mentioned. Now, being right. somebody who's old and like been living in L.A. for 12 years and I have like no idea. Like, what is it? What is New York nightlife like now? What is it still like that? So pre coronavirus, which I think is important to say, because right. now it's just everything is closed. So it, when when before the world stopped uh, in March in New York City, I think that there was a steady decline of what it meant to be going to. A night OK, well, first of all, I'll just say when we get older, our impression changes. Yes. Right. Like when we were 20 something years old, nightclubs meant a lot to us and where to go. It yes. was the only thing maybe I thought about. Yeah. Frankly. Yeah. Um, when you when you get older and you're not going to nightclubs anymore because your friends have kids or they're settling down or whatever, or they become you know weird to be in a nightclub five nights a week, the the perception that I have um, and that you have uh, is probably different than the twenty something year old today or the, the 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 upper teen. But I did see clearly the shift from 
our version of going out, which was the best and probably the last of it, in my opinion, um, to this changeover into festivals, house music, ticket buying, a lot of drug use, you know, for that go along with that, um, that style of music and that sort of, uh, scene. So I, we always stayed in that traditional, what we're used to. If you went to catch and went up to the roof, it would still be that open format DJ playing all sorts of hits from today and to yesterday and whatever, um, you know, top a hundred, whatever music. And, and it would be some bottle service and, um, it would be, you know, the typical door scene, but not that hard to get into It's sort of a a hospitality business now, not Mm -hmm. a exclusive business. But overall, the answer to the question is I think it's a pretty shitty business now. I think it's a short-lived, hard-to-make-money, expensive to run. Um, I could never do it over again in this environment. It's just the DJs cost too much. The promoters cost too much. The staff is expensive. um, The licensing is difficult. The rents are very high. I mean, everything that you don't want to be in the business plan is now, you know, all the things you have to overcome. It's tough. I compared nightclubs and restaurants in this way. Um, nightclubs are a newborn baby that never gets old. It just always is a newborn baby. It requires a tremendous amount of attention all the time. If you don't take care of it, nurture it, feed it and keep it going, it dies. Mm. A restaurant business is the natural progression of a, of a human being actually, because it also requires that nurturing and attention in the beginning as a baby, but it does take on a life of its own. If you do all the right things, no different than raising a child it can go on by itself and does. And there's many examples of that. Even for you guys, if you think of your favorite restaurant from 20 years ago, I would guess it's still there. And I would say that you don't know who the chef is. You don't know who the owner is. You don't know anything about it other than it's your food and your menu. And it's as long as it stays consistent from the yes. flavor of the sauce, your site. So that's an amazing thing because what I just described to you is an ability to expand. It's not about me and Eugene literally standing there partying with you so that you come. And if we're not there, you go to the other place. You'll go to our restaurant, whether you know me or not. But we have to do a lot of work for that to happen. So it's a much better business model to me. So, yeah, you said that you sold uh, life insurance. And it reminded me of a story. And I'll I'll start at the beginning of the story because there's a part that I want you to to take it from. Uh, So Mark and his partner, Eugene, had a house out in the Hamptons. Every summer, everybody would go there and big parties. And so there was a big flight of stairs. And then that first... So there was like the backyard, the pool was, and there was a big flight of stairs. And what was that, like 15, 20 feet up? Oh, I I know where you're going with yeah. this Yeah, is that like 15, yeah. 20 feet? So it's like... Yeah, so it was a weird house where you entered sort of on the main floor, which in the backyard was actually sub-level. So it was about, right. you enter about 15. So if you think of a basketball height of a rim is 10, another, I don't know, four or five feet for the backboard, right? So this that level would be essentially just above a backboard. Right. That's so uh, Mark was seeing a young lady. Were you dating or just friends? No, no, no. Uh, you were just dating. friends? No. You were friends? Yeah. Okay, so he's, yeah. he, he's with this girl who's a friend of his, and they were with uh, two other people, and she's like, oh, let's take a picture. up on." There was like a, 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 I know this story. a railing, and she's like, let's take a picture of me and you like up on here. And he's like, okay. So he deck. goes he goes to turn and give the person who they're with the camera to take the picture and he turns around and what did you see so it's mostly accurate well what happened was she's like oh just take a picture of me while you know before i go up. Oh, okay uh, you know and then she just takes her she, i i picked up a camera um from the counter and then she went out to go uh sit on the balcony of the deck and as i'm walking out i just saw two legs go up in the air and she fell you know, 15 or so feet down to the bottom, which was on grass, fortunately. But I don't think that would have mattered if she hadn't landed the way she landed. Well, that was a very sc- thank you, Rob, for the most traumatic experience of my life. I but was say, I just remember yeah, she was, was telling me it again. It was, now, it, was, it was a horrible, uh, you know, you, you, you know, I knew how high that was because I very often would sit there on the or see people sitting on the ledge and, and ask them to get off kind of aggressively because I was like, if you fall, you die. I mean, that's basically the way yes. I look at it. If you fall backwards or fell over this from this height, you're a very good chance of not dying, being paralyzed or very broken. Mm-hmm. So running down the stairs to see what I was going to see uh, or not see, I wasn't sure. But, you know, like time moved really, really slow. 
um, in that run because I thought I was going to at the at the best see just bones coming out of oh, something. Right. Uh, at the worst, you know, find someone who could have died, but she didn't. She did break her neck in a small way, uh, <sighs> but she wound up falling in a in a in a way for it, by no skill, just full rotation wise on her ass first and like on their side and she really you know she ha- had bad bruising and stuff but then um but that was super traumatic that was like you know i, I raised the railing after that and, well, and then she had to get she had to get helicopter to the hospital right oh, shit. Well, yeah because you probably didn't know what the damage was well when the when the fire department and the ems came uh you know i said well she, she fell by she sat and fell back they were like she fell from there you know like she fell backwards off of that and them understood like oh no 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 this is like an internal bleeding and they they took her they took her to the trauma hospital um by helicopter it was pretty terrible oh. yeah i want to stay in the traumatic space so <laughs> when you yeah my, when, my best friend died of cancer i mean you know is there anything else that you want when to you up? moved to <laughs> la obviously your transition in the restaurant world was not easy but it was it was welcomed everybody was very happy to see you out here you did great the food's great people loved it but you had a couple of problems with where you were living your first house got robbed and then what happened in the pool house of your second house <laughs> well when you move from new york to la you think that anything that's not a one bedroom sort of you know square is heaven on earth so when i came out here i rented a house that was pretty inexpensive like less than i was paying in new york for a one bedroom it was a three bedroom it had a backyard at a pool it had a driveway a garage a kitchen with a center island i was like this is yeah. I had a bedroom that I didn't even use. I was like, this is unbelievable. And it's less than my apartment in New York City. Yeah. I was like, LA is the best. But what you don't know is neighborhoods. And I guess, you know, my ignorance uh, got me into a situation where like two guys knocked down my door, like with the kicked it down. I happened to not be there, but I was, I came in just after, you know, and you could see that they, they were not, it was not good. Anyway, they ransacked it. And then my second house, which was actually an okay neighborhood, there was this like zombie basically on a bicycle that like would, would come at night and, and steal my mail through the, like the mail slot. It had like a box. It was a gated house, but I would see it on camera. It was crazy because I kept losing things, including my own wallet, which I left on an airplane. Anyway, <laughs> I realized it then because they were like, Oh, I sent your wallet back because they found it. And then I saw the video of this, this, what I deemed as an actual zombie it looked like it like the craziest person i've ever seen um and then i went away for a week and i was selling the house and my broker called me and said were you in the guest house over the weekend sleeping here i said no she's like well somebody was because there's it smells like death and there's a stain all over your white couch that i can't even describe um, there's a, there's used condoms on the floor and there's a bag of like Funyuns and some other stuff like <laughs> on the ground. I I was like, wow. So basically <sighs> two maybe homeless people went in there and rocked it, but at least they, you know, perform safe sex, which is nice to see. Yes. And, and I know the question everyone has, which is yes, Mark is actually 11 feet tall and that's a normal tennis ball in his hand. <laughs> Yeah, giant. My, uh, our buddy's it a giant. It does look like a baby tennis ball. Yeah, what are uh, it is? It's for my dog. Oh, no, okay. I was gonna mother. say. What are some mistakes that people make on job interviews when you're hiring people? That's a good question. You know, so many mistakes are made, but I think it's such an easy <laughs> thing to prepare for that almost no one does. So I would say that um, if you're going for an interview that's important to you know the person you're interviewing with know the history of the business that it is know their story you know it doesn't mean you have to go in there and recite it back to them to show you did it but i think that anybody who i've ever interviewed you know that is familiar at least with our journey and familiar with our restaurants and has come to our restaurants hopefully it's just a leg up if i interview somebody and they say and i ask them you know what have you heard about us why do you want to work for us and they're like well i just heard that you were hiring i don't know anything about you i've never into your restaurant i don't know anything about you guys and then they ask me to tell them my story i think that i'm immediately like you're not putting in you're not putting in the effort required for this job and that depends on what the job is obviously Mm -hmm. but i think it's in all levels and i've actually done some training for people that are 
homeless teens and that are trying to get back on their feet. And, and, you know, a lot of the things that they don't realize, and I think the interview process, funny you mention it, is extremely important because for very little effort and very little work, you can really impress somebody just by knowing about them. And, um, you know, just being straight to the point and honest, I think is really important. But uh, eye contact is important. It immediately shows confidence. Coming dressed to a meeting or an interview, not in a suit and tie necessarily if it's inappropriate, but but looking like you got up in the morning in advance, thought about it, combed your hair, put on something that is presentable of you is important even today, which I think that people get away from in my industry specifically. But it just shows that this person made an effort and they give a shit about whether or not their impression is made positive or negative, not like schluff that just I got in here and I'm doing whatever, uh, answering your questions and that's that. And can you give us uh, in the restaurant world what you think either the three best restaurants or more importantly, like the three best dishes? Like what are the be- if you were like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to die tomorrow. I could eat three meals. What are your what's your electric chair food? <laughs> uh, the Hillstone uh, spinach artichoke dip and the ribs, um, I think is just something I've been going for almost, I think, more than 20 years having the same thing, although it's getting fattening now. I can't do it as often. And then. uh a chicken parm um, from someplace great. Like, I, I don't exactly have... Actually, I think Craig's chicken parm out here it is It really is pretty terrific. good. Yeah, I'm I, with you on that. I really like it. Their sauce is good and the cheese is good. Sometimes you get extra sauce. Anyway, um, a chicken <laughs> parm, anything pizza-related that's great, specifically if I had to say, like, the best Joe's pizza from New York City when it yeah. was the best, like, that would be my wish Yeah. for food. Um King crab lobster, uh, king, cra- king, cra- king crab or lobster, depending on my like mood that that day that I'm going to get electric chaired. But <laughs> it's really hard if you can get good king crab legs, and we have them at Catch specifically. I'm not even just giving it a shout out. We have amazing king crab legs with drawn butter. It's very hard to beat that in yeah. terms of flavor um, and texture and all that. If it's great, um, but if you're kosher, sorry. Um, and you, started- I think that's my favorite. You started your own show on Instagram. Can you tell people about it? What's going on with that? Yeah, it's not, you know, it's it's called Catching Up. Um, obviously, for the play Cute. on words of catch, but Catching Up. It started just because during quarantine, I was getting some really good information from lawyers, um, doctors about the chaos. And the chaos for me was, and my industry was about leases and your rights and termination and rent and all the things that some landlords were bullying a lot of people around, um, especially smaller restaurants or retail stores. And I, you know, I myself felt uh, like, you know, our landlords were coming at us with some pretty hefty threats and sending letters and all this, like, you better pay me rent. I don't care what's going on kind of an attitude. And um, there was a really great lawyer that I was fortunate enough to meet with. Um, or speak to aside from the fact that we also had access to some great people from Tillman and Landry's team was our other partner. And I just felt like, you know what, I'm glad that I have this information because it's making me feel better. And it's also not allowing me to feel like I'm going to lose my business just because of what's going on. And I wanted to share that with whoever could possibly, I don't know. I mean, I don't have like a million followers, but I felt like if I just at least shared the information that I got with everyone that heard, it might help them. So I had a lawyer come on, this this guy in Dove, who represents both sides, landlords and uh, tenants. And so he saw it from an equally important perspective, which is where we're at. This is a this is not an us verse. It's everyone's in it sort of together. Yeah. And and a lot of people actually wrote to me that I didn't know and said this was extremely helpful. Thank you. And even called him and other people to ask these certain questions about what their rights were, which I thought was great. And then I'm blessed to have a good doctor. And honestly, he calmed me the fuck down. Um, he calmed my fiance down. He calmed my parents down. He, get, he was able to explain. And this is a guy who's been working with HIV since the very beginning. And so he had a really unique calming perspective of what this really is and to just chill the fuck out for a second. And I said, well, would you mind coming on and talking about this? Because I feel like if everyone could just hear you talking about it and you're a real serious doctor, at least maybe it's not just the CNN Dr. Fauci just saying whatever, and we don't know what their motivation is. So that was the second one. And I, and from that, you know, I was like, maybe I need to spice it up. So I called Reggie Miller, who I know, 
And he was just on the documentary with Michael Jordan, which just came out in the beginning of the pandemic. And I wanted to, you know, I didn't want it to be just lawyers and doctors. So I was like, yeah. all right, let's talk about Reggie and what he's doing, catching up with Reggie, catching up with whoever. And it had a nice response and I was bored, to be honest. So I just started, I look at my network, which is quite good, ranging from all these interesting people. And, um, and I just thought it'd be nice to just have a catching up. How are you doing during quarantine? We're literally sitting in our yeah. house with our, what I'm doing right now. Yeah. That's you know, cool. and I was just like, if I could ask Chris Rock to tell me about New Jack City or Jamie Foxx, turns out he tells me about um, Mike Tyson. Literally, t- yeah, with, about him doing the doc, uh, the docu, well, I don't know, documentary. It's the reenactment of Mike Mike Tyson's life, and Jamie's playing Mike Tyson, yeah. and he's like, here, hold on, I'm gonna show you something. He grabs his phone and then holds up the picture of him as Mike Tyson, which no one had seen before, and then it took off like crazy because. Daily Mail, TMZ, and then I'm watching it on the news the next day. Catching up show, Mark Bernbaum, <laughs> Jamie Foxx. It went as viral as anything I've seen ever in my lifetime. I'm all around the world in every publication. Still, I get these alerts about it. So I was like, well, that's interesting. Maybe I'll keep going. But, you know, I, it's not really something that uh, I'm being paid to do or or even really considering making it into a real show like you guys are doing. But um can you give us I a shout out on your next you uh, <laughs> your next episode? We could, yeah. we, we could use a shout out on the next catching up. Maybe yeah. just drop us. I'm gonna bring. Well, uh, yeah, I can have you guys on. Would be nice. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, bring. I'm gonna bring Casim yeah. to catch one night. He's got. Yeah. Uh, look, I've never come. I hear great things. Uh, to be honest, I feel like I'm a little rough around the edges to be at a place like Catch, but uh, I, I don't <laughs> feel like that's the case. You know, talking to you now, I no. feel like I could. Go enjoy myself. I get intimidated, you know, when the place is, uh, <laughs> you've got a Lindsay Lohan. Well, maybe, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, she's she's great. Uh, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying is uh, it, it's got this sort of cachet that doesn't seem like I can permeate, you know. And, and hearing you rank the tables, I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to be at that C-list table. Or do I? I'm just happy to be there, you know. So I'm, I'm interested and I would... I would love to check it out and well, try no, the Caesar salad. First of all, it's a very much not, yeah. you know, uh, pretentious place at all. If it was, it wouldn't work. And by the way, we're 450 seats in L.A. And uh, you don't have the ability to be that way. Um, you have to be something for everybody. And and um, you would feel you could wear exactly what you're wearing and not get dressed up. Please don't. No one does. Uh, I wear this tonight. It makes no difference. Um, and it's completely open air. So the beauty of what's happened was is that we're at 60 percent capacity um, legally and it's the roof is open and it feels very normal. So it's that's actually nice. I think it's always safe regardless. But that's my opinion. But uh, but for you, you know, so- if you're an old person or younger, it doesn't matter. Uh, Jamie, Jamie's got to go because she has to go pick up oh, her kid sorry. from preschool whose teacher has a face tattoo, which I don't know how she lets. Unbelievable. <laughs> I don't know how she lets the kid go all day with somebody. With what face. is it of? It says, fuck you under under the eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Yeah, I mean, he's, I shit. want my son protected. It says <laughs> eat shit on the knuckles with yeah. an exclamation point. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, so, yeah, can you just tell people, like, what can they do to support the restaurant industry yes. now, get it back on its feet? Um, I think small business in general. Restaurants are one of them. Um, I think, you know, supporting your local grocery store versus ordering things off of Amazon and, and Fresh Direct and all that. Just supporting your local business is important now. And and people always said that, you know, like, oh, support your local businesses because it's true. These giant behemoths are putting everybody out of business. But now this is really the nail in the coffin for a lot of people. It's sad. I think we're not even seeing the tip of the iceberg because of PPP money, which a lot of people did get, which was good. But at the same time, it runs out in October for everyone. Um, and now is where you're going to start seeing evictions and start seeing people just throw back keys all over the place. So I would, I would almost beg anyone, even if it's just delivery to order from the restaurants you always enjoyed and try some new ones, support your local business. That's all. Awesome. And you're uh, Mark Birnbaum on Instagram. Yeah, that's it. That's where people can find you. And Great I to catch... see you, Mark. Uh, great to see you. I hope to see you in person soon. Me too. Me too. Yeah, we're yeah you by. guys will be fine coming to the restaurant, any one of them. It's I'd love great. it. It would actually feel so good. We do j- football at Jamie's house restaurant. every Sunday. Just send one of those sushi guys to her house and, and <laughs> have them make us some hand rolls. <laughs> nope. Nope. Well, how about you just come to dinner? Like, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, we'll let's do that. Do, that. Uh, do you not see what we have going here? We don't go out in public anymore. We're fucking huge. 
Uh, <laughs> no, thanks a lot for coming on. We'll see you soon. Great to meet you, buddy. Yeah, we'll do this again for sure. Nice to meet you too. Thanks. I look right. forward to having we'll see you. See you next right, time. Later. Bye, guys. Sorry. Is guys. that our episode? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, let me. Pl- can I do a plug? You can go. Do it all. Hey, uh, I want to thank Mark Birnbaum. You can find him on Instagram. Thank you if you're watching on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Click the notification bell. Say goodbye to Jamie. Just go. Fuck off. No, I'm going to stay until you finish. Okay. Uh, uh, Reddit. We have a Reddit r slash Only you would do that for Connor. And uh, that's it. Uh, Thank you guys for watching. Okay. Yeah, rub up against me a little bit.